Oh yeah. Hey everybody, Kyle from Flat Top Gaming. I got a request to talk to you guys about obligation and how it works and, and really what it is. Obligation is something that's unique to the Star Wars Edge of the Empire system by Fantasy Flight Games. And some it's something that really is setting specific. It is uh, very crucial to making the edge, the, the scummy, sleazy feel of Star Wars, uh, really just achieve that goal. So I'm going to split this into two videos. Uh, for part one, I'm going to talk about what obligation is and a lot of the mechanics behind it. And then my second video, I'm going to talk about how to use obligation narratively, and then some pitfalls for game masters to try and avoid. So without any further ado, let's get started. So obligation represents the fact that at the edge of the empire, both uh, from a societal standpoint, you're at the edge of society, and from a physical standpoint, uh, you know, in some of the backwater worlds like Tatooine or Dagobah, you cannot get anything without owing someone else for it. Uh, your freedom does not exist. You owe someone financially. You owe them for, um, you know, bonds, like you know, family bonds. Uh, maybe you're a slave or were a slave. Maybe you're a criminal and are, are hiding out. Um, you know, you, you just can't get something for nothing. And that's what obligation really strives to represent. Obligation is something that you start the game with during character creation. The book provides a list of 12 um, ideas or general obligation types that you can use if that's really something you want to do. Or you can work with your game master and come up with something else, something unique on its own that um, would fit your character that may not be within the, the list that they provide. Uh, some of the examples from that list are addictions, uh, betrayal, blackmail, um, a bounty on your head, you were a criminal, you owe a debt. Um, so this gives give you a kind of an idea of <clears throat> the different ways that you may owe people at the beginning of the game. Now, how much obligation you take at the beginning of the game depends on how many players are playing with you. In a two-player game, and, and as a reminder, two players means two-player characters, so three people total at the table, you'd start with 20 points of obligation. Uh, three players, 15, four players, or five players, 10, and six players would be um, five obligation points each. Now this value is really important because at character creation you can take on additional obligation usually of the same type but sometimes of different types if that's really what you want to choose um, and those additional obligation uh, points that you pick up cannot exceed the same value that you started with so if you're playing in a three player game and so you start with 15 points of obligation, you can pick up an additional 15 points after that. And doing so grants you uh, a number of uh, bonuses to, to your character. If you take up five obligation, you can either get an additional five experience points for character creation or 1,000 extra credits, which you only start with 200. So if you're a gear-heavy character, that's going to go a long way for you. For an extra 10 obligation, you can pick up 10 experience points or 2,500 starting credits. That's that's quite a lot. Um, again, for the gear heavy character, if you take on 10 extra obligation, suddenly you've got 3,000 credits that you get to start with. That's a, a good chunk of gear that you can you can start your character with. So I have to warn you, you can't just go out and everyone max out on their obligation. There's a couple of things that happen with obligation every single session that will tamper and, and put a cap on how much obligation you and your fellow characters take on. So during character creation or shortly thereafter, the Game Master is going to create a chart that's going to list all of the character's obligation, kind of like this one right here. And on that chart, you're going to see the character's name, you're going to see the character's obligation level as well as what numbers the GM is going to roll in order to trigger that person's obligation. At the beginning of every session the GM is going to pull out that table, roll a d100, and if the value lands within the range of one of the players, that player's obligation triggers. That means mechanically that player's strain threshold is reduced by two, 
for the duration of the session, and everyone else in the party's drain threshold is reduced by 1. Now, if the GM roll doubles, so 11, 22, 33, that means that the uh, strain value decrease is actually twice as bad. So the affected player has a strain threshold decrease of 4, whereas everyone else at the table has a strain decrease of 2. Now, for those characters that have special talents and abilities that utilize strain often, if you are one of those players that spends a lot of strain to take extra maneuvers, that's really going to hamper your gameplay. So you have to decide, are you going to invest heavily into obligation and risk being low on strain frequently? Or are you going to kind of pull back a little bit on how much strain you undertake, not roll obligation as often? Okay, so what? My obligation triggered. Now what happens? The Game Master is now encouraged to introduce an encounter into the session where that player's obligation comes up. Looking at the movies, this is definitely the turning point in Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. Han and Leia, you know, I, I, I guarantee it, Han Solo's obligation triggered that, that session. And so as they rolled into the Cloud City, the GM said, okay, now here's the obligation. Uh, Boba Fett is there and Vader's there and um, you're now paying up on your debt to Jabba the Hutt. The Game Master is encouraged to include an encounter of some kind that's going to force the player into a choice. Do they deal with their obligation or do they kick it down the road? Obviously, the players can do whatever they want. If they don't feel like dealing with their obligation, they can kick it down the road, in which case the Game Master is encouraged to up the difficulty next time that obligation is checked. Um, the, the Game Master is really discouraged from giving more obligation. So if if player uh, uh, was playing Han Solo and he decided to run away and, and completely dodged the encounter and was able to escape, he wouldn't get more obligation. Instead, he would just, you know, have to face a bigger challenge next time out. You know, if you can face a bigger challenge than Darth Vader. But hey, you know, that's that's for a different discussion. Now, if during that encounter, the player decides to actually address their obligation and pay down part of it, then they are allowed to take some pay points off of the obligation. So say, say they have an obligation of 10, they owe the hut 10,000 credits, they pay 2,000 credits, the obligation now goes from a 10 to an 8. The Game Master will have to adjust their chart, but hey, at least the player is working toward the goal of eliminating that obligation. Speaking of eliminating obligations, if you're as long as you're playing an Edge of the Empire game, no player can be without obligation. Every player has to have a minimum of a 5 obligation. This is just because even if you completely pay off your debts, there's still someone else or something else that's going to try and screw you over. If your player does manage to, to pay off their debts and clear their obligation completely, find another one or find a new one that, uh, that you can pick up in its place. Other things you can do with obligation during the game are to use it as a threshold. If the group's total obligation reaches 100, no player is allowed to spend their earned experience points to level up between sessions. Your group gets all this extra obligation, you know, they're, you're going through play and you're picking up more, you're, you're adding more debts, and we'll talk about how to do that in a second, and you get to the point where your, your t group's total obligation is 100. Well, obviously on a D100, the GM could never exceed that, so the obligation is always going to trigger. The GM will award you know, 15, 20 experience points for the session and then say, you guys cannot spend this to upgrade your character. You guys have to pay off some of your obligations before you can do that. It really is another one of those, hey guys, we need to, uh, need to kind of watch ourselves because we're, we're really not able to get any better until we kind of clear our name a little bit. Having a high or a low obligation may also be sort of a, a reputation that, that carries with you within the universe. Say so you have a low group obligation level, then the well-to-do aristocrats of some planet would be more than happy to deal with you. And yet a hut would not trust you because they think you're too much of a do-gooder. On the other hand, your obligation's in the 90s. Oh, a hut's gonna love you, but 
that aristocrat doesn't want to touch you with a 10-foot pole. The last use for obligation within the game is as a resource. And I think this is a wonderful resource for mitigating and counteracting total party kills or TPKs. In D&D, whenever I kill players or uh, wipe out a party, I'll tend to make the next session you know, them trying to escape hell or, or one of the other astral planes. Maybe someone, maybe they're reincarnated in a different plane. They have to get back to the material plane. Well, we don't have those mythos within Star Wars. As far as we know, once you're dead, you either become a force ghost or you're just done. So using obligation, we're able to take a total party kill, you know, come back and, and say, oh, these rebels were in infiltrating the base a little behind you and they rescued you, you now owe them a debt. You now owe them for rescuing you. In that case, the party as a whole is going to take up an obligation. So say the party would get 10 debt obligation, and so whenever that is rolled, the rebels come calling and saying, hey, we could use some help smuggling our people into this heavily infested Imperial planet. Using it as a, a resource for total party kills is a great alternative and, and really is going to change the story a lot. You all can, also can use it to purchase things that maybe you haven't really uh, been able to afford yet. You know, the, the, the group wants a new spaceship that costs 100,000 credits. Groups only got 10,000. Where are they going to get the extra 90? Hey, that hut over there has enough money. Maybe maybe, maybe they can loan us. And uh, we'll just we'll pay them off. And so that would be 10, 15, 20, whatever you feel is appropriate. Um, obligation points to get a little extra cash to make that big purchase. But again, if that obligation is rolled, you're going to get a call on your comm link from the hut saying, Hey, I've got a job for you. And that's obligation. That is how you get more, that's how you spend it, how you use it, and really some of its purposes mechanically within the game. Watch my next video for how you can utilize it narratively, as well as some GM pitfalls that should be avoided with obligation. See you next time, and until then, see you later. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Also, leave me any feedback in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you.